and crack the gate too. So with this challenge, it says the login system has been upgraded with a basic rate limiting mechanism that locks up repeated fields. Attempts from the source we receive a tip that the system might still use user control headers. Your objective is to bypass the rate limiting restriction and log in using the known email object CTF player at picoctf.org and uncover the hidden secret. The website is running here. Can you try to log in and download the list here? We got three hits. This is what IP does the server think you're coming from? To remove, read more about X forward four. And you can rotate fake IPs to bypass the rate limit. So with these three hints, it's telling us that there's a rate limit behind what's going on here. So I'm assuming if I try TTF player multiple times with the different password list that we have, we might get blocked. So I'm gonna try that right now. But you bypass it using the X forward four header. But let's just check this out. So let's check this out. So this is the list right here. And I think I already have it downloaded. So I can just go right here. Let's go right here. And then cat password. So let's say we assume we try one of these. We're probably going to get blocked after one try. And then we try it again. Too many failed attempts. We're going to try again in 20 minutes. So yeah. So we, we get, I guess, uh, blocked because of our IP. Oh, it's logging us up. How do we bypass, I guess, that feature since it blocks us right away after we do one try? So it says we could use X forward for so what's X forward four is basically a way of a way of a, a way of mis just misdirecting like a request to make it seem that we're coming from a different IP. In this case, uh, right here, we're just using multiple IPs to bypass whatever we're trying to go through. So we had to add that in our request. So I tried doing it using Burp, but I was having a hard time. So what I thought because we do know how to program and this will make the challenge a lot more interesting, a lot more fun is that we could do this programmatically and just code our way to the solution. So let's do that. So what we could do is firstly open up nano.solve.py and do, let's see, import request and then import random to generate the random uh, api so we're gonna have to make a target target equals basically our target url that we that we want to input in our case it's gonna be the login feature and then uh, post and then send it to login so it's gonna be this right here login and then after that, we're gonna have to pass in the password file, password underscore file is equal to password.txt. And then we're gonna have to put the email that we wanna input, which is basically whatever it's giving us in the challenge, which is this. Got this quick because we don't have that much time and then time out. Uh, no, nah, it's fine. So we want to be able to create, I guess, a uh, random IP. So it is pretty easy. So we'll do def rand and then underscore IP to generate an IP, and then we'll just do return. And then to generate a random IP, we just put dots. And this is gonna count for every single one that we're gonna put dot and then. Like that should be good enough. And then we're gonna do format. And then we're gonna do this general random IP of the rand int between one to two fifty four. And we'll do that uh three times. One, two, one, two, three, and then four. So that should be good. And after ha after that, we're gonna need to create multiple sessions that we wanna try this. So this will be pretty easy. So we'll do session is gonna equal to 
request a se session and create one session and then I'm going to do session dot headers I'm going to add a headers to this uh, update and then we'll just do user agent user agent and then we're just gonna put the user agent that we want to put in this case we just steal it from right here use a uh, user agent that we have here hopefully this one doesn't generate any issues back right here hopefully that one doesn't generate no issues for us if not we have to change it and then after that we're gonna have to open our file with open a child every password there is inside that password file so we're gonna look put password and this might not work because it might not maybe it would we'll see right now password <sighs> and then we, we want to be able to read inside this file and then just have everything the same in coding it is equal to utf-8 and then error equals ignore and then uh, fh let's see for every i line in enumerate fh star one pwd equals line dot strip we're gonna strip it because there might be a new line at the end if not pwd continue after that ip is gonna equal ran we're gonna keep on calling that function rand ip header i'm gonna pass right here we're gonna add into it i'm gonna pass in the x forward four Then we're gonna pass in IP data, basically our data that's gonna be passed in, which is gonna be email, and then it's gonna be our email value, email, capital email. After that, password is basically gonna be for every PWD. So for every password that we get, so PWD. And then I guess you guys want to ask how I got this part. You basically get it from uh, the log itself. We request, and you get it raw. You see how it's formatted, email, and then password. Basically how you get it. And then after that, I'm going to do try r is equal to session dot post we're gonna send a post request for every time i'm gonna target whatever we're targeting which is the login page and then we're gonna pass in the data that we want it to which is the our field my bad 
we give it the specific headers. Is equal to headers. And then timeout. Uh, we didn't specify a timeout, but we could do it right now. Time out equals 10. So 10 seconds. Is equal to time out. And then after that, we're just gonna do. Are we gonna allow redirects, which is true? We don't. We need to make sure if it redirects to a correct like login page. Allow redirect is equal to true. Then we need to get everything from our uh, our response. So it'll be the status is gonna equal to our the uh, status code status code, and then length is equal to the length of our our dot content, and then. Ah, this is fine. Let's see. And then we're going to print basically everything. So it's going to be R, not R. Uh, PW print PWD print out the password print out our the status code to see if it will what it printed out and then print out our length then Accept request dot request uh, exception. So this basically we print out an error as e and then print out e. So let's see. Okay. So all about pi. See, make sure we done uh, that password txt. So this might throw an error because we might need to put in the full path. We'll see right now. Python three. Solve the pi. Oh. Nano solve the pi. Oh, right there. You know. Uh, let's see, request is not defined. Uh, request. Mm, header. Where did I get it from? Line thirty. Oh, request. Okay, line thirty. That was twenty-one. <sighs> Session. Session headers update with open.
Oh, okay, accept the request. Request. Uh, allowed redirect. Redirects. Let's see. So how are we gonna like look at this clearly? So for every one of these, you see everything gets 200. So we wanna see if there is any of them that stand out, which they don't cause all of them are 200. Now we wanna look at the length. So the length is gonna give us something cause they all say 17. But let's see if we see any of them that say a different length, 17, 17, and then 132. So I would assume this probably gave out a different answer from the rest. So from here, we would assume this one on top because how we started our code was that it would uh can't solve that pi that it will print out the password first and the status and the length and then this the length for one of these was different i just need to look for it again 132 was different and but it had the same status code as the rest of them but this was different so i'm assuming this could be the password so now if we try this and we get it login log successful and we get the bypass. So yeah. So that's why I guess. We could have done it using Burp, but I was having trouble with it because I feel like every time I tried using it, it said it was a paid feature. But anyway, this is how you solve it. Now I'm going to submit it. And yeah, hope you guys learned something new today. I know I did. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.